Hello everybody and welcome back to this special series of Virtual Road Trip, where we explore the reservoirs, aqueducts, and beautiful scenery of the New York City water supply system. Today, we will once again be heading underground to explore the amazing complex of tunnels that collectively make up the Delaware Aqueduct, the eighth wonder of the world. I just want to clarify that I'll be using the terms aqueduct and tunnel interchangeably in this video, uh, essentially meaning the same thing. The entire complex is known as the Delaware Aqueduct and it exists mostly as tunnels, including one large section that we'll be talking about mostly in this video, um, but there are some above ground sections as well, so just to uh, avoid any confusion on that, both terms will be used. The story of the Delaware Aqueduct begins much the same like the other projects in this series, with the ever-increasing demand for fresh drinking water in the sprawling metropolis of New York City. And this demand was extremely high in the late 1930s, with surveyors from the city looking ever further west for more valleys to dam and flood. Here is a map of the Delaware system that we have seen in previous videos. The reservoirs we studied last time are here in the north while the Neversink and Rondout, both considerably smaller, are south, lying close to each other. All these reservoirs are connected by three tunnels. The East and West Delaware Tunnels connect the Papacton and Cannonsville Reservoirs from the north. Here you see the very southern end of the East Tunnel. And the Neversink Tunnel drains its namesake from the west. Alone, each of these tunnels are quite an engineering feat in their own right, bored thousands of feet under mountains and stretching up to 30 to 40 miles in length. Here, we see both east and west tunnels draining into the northern end of the Rondout Reservoir. Speaking of the Rondout, it is not only a collection point for water from farther north, it is a genuine reservoir in itself, impounding its namesake, the Rondout Creek, at the Merriman Dam, located at the former site of the village of Lackawack, about 10 miles north of Ellenville, New York. It runs about 6.5 miles in length, with an average depth of 74 feet, and holds just under 50 billion gallons of water at full capacity. The reservoir was built starting in 1937, just as the aqueduct project began, and took until 1954 to fully complete. In a similar story to other major water projects we've seen in previous videos, local towns and villages were raised, flooded, and lost to history. Interestingly enough, even though it's considered part of the western Delaware system, both the Rondout Reservoir and Creek lie within the Hudson River watershed, with the Rondout Creek eventually emptying into the Hudson at Kingston, New York. Here at the intake, at the southern end of the Rondout, is where the Delaware Tunnel begins. From the start, it bores deep beneath the stable bedrock of the Appalachian Plateau, and travels in a southeasterly direction. Because it exists solely underground at this point, it travels a straight path from southwestern Ulster County into Orange County, New York, where the tunnel then crosses under the Hudson River near the town of Newburgh. Once across, and after a slight shift in direction, this portion of the aqueduct continues until it reaches the West Branch Reservoir, which is near the town of Carmel in Putnam County, New York. Here is a profile of this section of the aqueduct between the Rondout and West Branch Reservoirs which stretches a distance of 70.5 kilometers, or close to 44 miles in length. You can see just how deep the tunnel begins. Dropping hundreds of feet to below sea level, it continues to dive deeper as it heads south, reaching its deepest point at the Hudson River crossing. After this, the force of the water flow pushes back up to surface level, having lost a net elevation of 338 feet. At the aforementioned West Branch Reservoir, water reaches the surface before entering the second stage of the aqueduct and heads further south to the Kensico Reservoir in Valhalla, New York. This is also the ending location of the nearby Catskill Aqueduct, which we have covered in a previous video. From here, the last stage brings water from the Kensico to the Hillsview Reservoir, which lies on the border of Westchester County and the Bronx, and is the official end of the aqueduct. The Hillsview is a storage reservoir for distribution to the main water tunnels of New York City. Also, both the West Branch and Kensico can be bypassed by tunnels running underneath them. 
thus keeping a continuous underground tunnel from start to finish, and at 85 miles in length, even 75 years after it was completed, the Delaware Aqueduct is still the longest tunnel in the world, for any purpose. It's true, here's the list if you don't believe me. As you can imagine, building this amazing structure was quite an undertaking, and took over six years, with workers boring a hole that varied from 13.5 to 19.5 feet in diameter, using only dynamite and sheer manpower. The sides of the tunnel were lined with concrete to withstand pressure, and in areas of weaker bedrock, steel lining was used as a reinforcement. The aqueduct was completed and put into service by 1945, and soon after, the addition of larger reservoirs further north increased the flow through the tunnel immensely. Today, the Delaware Aqueduct accounts for approximately half of the entire water supply system, moving an impressive 1.3 billion gallons of fresh drinking water every day. However, this high capacity and high demand have taken the tunnel to its limits through the years, which have led to cracks and leaks, as well as controversy. Beginning in the early 1990s and continuing through the next decade, residents of several towns along the aqueduct's route began seeing unusual and apparently random flooding events. In the small hamlet of Awarson, New York, just miles south of the Rondout Reservoir, the basements of local residents began flooding as well as their septics and wells overflowing, even during times of dry weather. Also, in a town further south, just outside of Newburgh, New York, Residents began noticing a new spring that had formed, followed shortly by a small pond. By this point, the agency in charge of the aqueduct, the New York City Department of Environmental Protection, had noticed as well. They soon sent down submersible drones and divers to survey the tunnel, and found large cracks in several sections, including below the two worst flood sites. Investigations found that the worst damage took place where the tunnel bored through limestone rock, which would dissolve over time and weaken the walls of the structure. By 2012, it was estimated that the Delaware Aqueduct was losing as much as 35 million gallons of water every day from leakage. Enough drinking water for half a million people, and it had been leaking this much for at least the past 25 years. The DEP decided that the damaged section near and under the Hudson River would be bypassed entirely by a new tunnel. The project was announced and started in 2013 and is one of the largest civil projects in recent New York State history, costing an estimated $1.5 billion. Stretching between shafts on both shores, the 2.5 mile long bypass will traverse the most complex part of the system, boring through over 12,000 feet of bedrock and crossing as much as 800 feet below the river. Once complete, the entire aqueduct will be shut down for an estimated two years in order to connect the bypass to the main system. Repairs in other areas, including under rewarsing, will also take place during this time. However, with most projects of this size, delays are to be expected. While the DEP began planning for a massive public works project, many upstate residents in towns and villages affected by the leaks began to experience what many in the past had, the seemingly impossible fight against the big powerful city. The leaks caused damage to homes and foundations, created mold problems, and also disturbed the local water table, causing septic tanks to overflow and contaminate groundwater. Some residents were forced to move and have their homes demolished, creating a familiar story we've heard when dealing with the city water supply. With a tentative completion date of 2023, there is optimism that these lingering issues will be solved and both city and upstate residents can finally put the leakage and flooding problems behind them. For now. So that's going to do it for this video, as well as this entire series on the New York City water supply system. And I really do hope you enjoy the entire thing. This video in particular took a lot of work and research, so I very much appreciate you watching it. And if you're interested in more on the Delaware Aqueduct and the repairs that are underway, there is a wealth of info out there, trust me. <laughs> I only scratched the surface. And I included links in the description for further reading, which I highly recommend. So, in the meantime, be sure to look out for more VRT documentaries in the near future on all kinds of subjects. I have a lot of things in the works right now, trust me. And uh, for now, just be sure to like, 
comment, and subscribe, all the usual. And uh, yeah, as always, enjoy the ride.